Hello, uh, my name is Richard Thrip, and I'm running for Congress in Florida 6th District as a uh, progressive Democrat. Uh, this is the second uh, one that I'm doing of a um, fireside chat, I'll call it. Instead, we have these little baby nightlights like uh, FDR. But it's on finance this time and about coronavirus. So today, it's important to mention when this is. It's March 28th, Saturday at... Um, 6 30 p.m. because the situation's changing so quickly and getting worse and worse. Um, I think finance is very important for everybody. Obviously, you know, a lot of people can't work right now and their jobs are um, letting them go. And uh, sometimes they're still having to pay other bills. Like, you know, your, your rent might not stop. Ideally, it would, but uh, some people are being told you still got to pay your rent, you know, in the first three days of April. And uh, also, the virus is out of control. Um, it would have been really good if there was a big reaction from this administration at the beginning. And I know there is plenty of blame to go around. If you want to play the blame game, there's plenty of blame assigned to China, and there's plenty of blame to assign to the United States, and uh, plenty of blame to assign to people you know who aren't taking it seriously and going out too much. Uh, churches are reportedly some of them are still having large meetings even though that's almost guaranteed going to kill people if people are going to get sick and, and you could get sick now and it could be something not even related at all to coronavirus like you could get a kidney stone and end up dying because you know you have the all the medical care is assigned to tackling you know patients that have coronavirus and even if you get care for something else being around them is going to cause you possibly to get sick as well. Uh, we have a friend who's a, a nurse up in New York City, and she used to live down here. She asked me not to say too much, though, because she doesn't want to, um, you know, get in trouble or anything. But she's dealing with patients that are all on ventilators. They all have uh, COVID-19, which is the uh, condition that coronavirus causes. And it's just, uh, it's a nightmare. Basically, it's like a war zone, and you know, many of our, our healthcare workers are going to have post-traumatic stress um, disorder for quite some time. So, um, getting back to finances, because that's kind of my specialty, I uh, I do teach future teachers at University of Central Florida about technology, and my PhD is in education. But I studied the uh, what the, the teachers before they become teachers know about the pension system in Florida retirement and investing and personal finance. And it's not a whole lot. And uh, obviously most people don't have a big pile of money to sit on that they can use for an event like this. Uh, we always tell people that um, you should have a six month emergency fund, but that's just much easier said than done. And it's shown that, oh, it's very hypocritical because Boeing didn't have a six month emergency fund. I mean, the airlines, the cruises, none of them, big companies, small companies. Uh, I mean, obviously some are better financially positioned than others, but you look at so many big companies that literally kept buying back their shares and that helps the executives. Executive compensation is off the charts, uh, which is something that kind of started with McKinsey and company as management consultants. Uh, they popularized the idea that you need to get rid of middle management and pay executives much more like CEO pay is off the charts and the other idea that CEOs are a special class of people that can move around between corporations. It used to be a corporation, uh, the CEO started out real young and worked their way up and they're a CEO of that company. Like you're CEO of AT&T, you wouldn't expect someone who's doing that to be a competent CEO of eBay. But now you can just float, they just float around as if they're like special and, uh, you know, able to manage any company. And it doesn't make any sense. And they always have ridiculous um, packages for compensation. And the research even says that a lot of people really tie their uh, self-worth as a person to what they're earning financially and, you know, what title they have. And it's, it's not, I don't think it's any way to live, but nevertheless, you know, that's easy to say for, um, for, for, for them, it's like, it's just a different world, you know? Um, and so you see with this, this bailout package, it's good that we have a lot of money that's coming to individual people, 
But to get that, you know, the Democrats and Republicans fought over it, and they had to give a lot of money to big business. Uh, Donald Trump, he made a signing statement on it where he said, I'm just going to disregard the law. I'm not even going to follow it. It says I have to release the names of people um, and the names of corporations that receive, you know, money from that $500 billion fund. I'm not doing it. And I don't know how that's, that's not legal. Like we know, I'm not even going to say that's legal because it isn't. Um, but that's the state we're in when it comes to finance in this country. And uh, I think they had something in there like CEOs now can have $3 million per year plus up to half of what they got last year. That's still a lot. Like some of these CEOs are at like $40 million. So now, oh, uh, you can get like 20 million. I mean, does that seem right? No, not at all. But anyway, uh, they, they will do that no matter what. And uh, they were saying, they don't have emergency funds. They kept buying their stock. Like Boeing stock was as high as $440 a share. And now, I mean, what is it now? It's really low. Uh, Boeing is like almost a junk stock at this point. Um, oh, they're at $162 and uh, they had fallen to be as low as $95 a share on March 20th. Uh, but they came back up knowing that they're getting about a $50, a $50 billion loan. Um, and they had problems even before coronavirus got started. I mean, the 737 MAX has been a total disaster. There's stuff coming out that they covered up, and uh, people there, some people knew that this um, MCAS system that could cause the nose to go down without the pilots knowing how to fix it, that was something that people knew there at Boeing was a risk, and they did it anyway. And uh, now, you know, they're looking at this as their opportunity to get a bailout, not just for coronavirus, but to make up for their past mistakes. And, and that's just not fair to American workers. Uh, now I know that, you know, these are good jobs and the people who work for these companies are, um, you know, they need to work, but it's kind of like giving money to the corporation. It's kind of like giving money to slave owners and saying, oh, now they're going to take better care of their slaves because we gave the slave owners money. It's just ridiculous. If you want to help people, then give the people who work for these companies money. Don't, don't give it to the, you know, and I know they're going to pay it back allegedly. And, you know, you can't loan people money, but you can loan corporations money because they're like not a big risk. But um, when it comes to say credit card, you and I would have to pay like 28% a year of interest. And uh, even if it's daily, I mean, even if it's like an APR of 25%, they compound it per day. So, you know, each day it gets bigger. So 25% APR on your credit card, that's actually 28% per year. If you owe 10,000 a year later, you owe, you know, $12,840. Uh, so what can you do with your finances now? Uh, one of the most important things is to ask for a special uh, treatment. So a lot of people don't even do this and they lose a lot of money. I remember when I was a student at um, Daytona Beach Community College, I was even um, a financial, you know, person then who enjoyed learning about finance, you know, finding out all the tricks you can to get a college education for free. And so I'd apply for um, scholarships from Daytona State College. They changed your name when I was there. And I would also apply for the Pell Grant uh, and I also did the Bright Future Scholarship. Uh, but I met people that they could have got the Pell Grant. They didn't even apply for the federal application for free student aid. And if they would have, they would have gotten a lot of money. So you, you don't want to be one of those people who doesn't know about it and misses out. Uh, when it comes to these relief checks that have just been passed yesterday by Congress and signed into law uh, by President Trump, it looks like you won't have to do too much you're going to get them automatically most likely into your um, checking account or whatever bank account you put on your previous tax return. But, but uh, there's other things you might have to do like for unemployment. And as we know right now, um, the websites are overloaded in Florida. You know, the website's crashing constantly and you cannot call in because nobody's there. Um, I mean, there's people there, but they're not able to help you because the wait time is like three, four hours on the phone. So I would say just don't even bother to call and keep trying to do it online. Uh, one thing that people were very upset about on the, on the right 
was um, this bill includes a $600 supplement per week for people on un unemployment. And in Florida, you can only get $275 a week no matter how much you make. And usually that's only for 11 weeks when the unemployment rate is low, but now it'll be for longer. So with that supplement, uh, you I think you can get $875 a week. And so some people were real upset because you know, a lot of people didn't make that much per week before. But I think that's just ridiculous to be upset about that when we have such a crisis on our hands and we have so much money to give free loans to big companies and businesses, as well as small businesses, which we have, you know, 31 million small businesses in America, 60 million uh, people work for small businesses. And when we talk about CEOs, you know, I'm talking about big corporations. The average CEO probably only has like two employees and one of those employees is him or her. But when you look at, you know, the companies that are very large, those are the ones that get all of the special advantages and uh, they lobby hard for those too. And that's not fair and it's not capitalism. I mean, it's not the capitalism you want. It's like corporatism, oligarchy, crony capitalism, call it what you will. But you know, the idea that on the right, like Republicans are for small businesses, that's kind of mm, just not true because you look and the advantages always go to the big businesses that end up coming in and uh, crushing the small businesses. So, you know, you could be worried about oh, you know, government is going to like ruin my business. And the Amazon comes right in and crushes you because they have all these advantages. They don't really have to pay any federal um, corporate income tax. Whenever they like when they were looking to put in a second headquarters, uh, they just solicited everybody in the country, all cities and counties and states were seeing how many billions of dollars can we give Amazon to try to get them to come here that, you know, if there was a thousand small businesses all at once coming to try to go to that city or town or state, they would get nothing. But when it comes to a big business, it's like, oh, here, we're opening the floodgates for all this free money for you. Uh, getting back to like more things on an individual level, obviously uh, social distancing is very important and there's a huge financial cost as well as a humanitarian cost to catching this virus. And you might not even know you have it. Obviously, Senator Rand Paul, who's a, a Republican senator who has it, um, and he had it, he took a test and he kept going out, like swimming in the community pool at the Senate. But then he said, well, you know, I shouldn't have even had to take a test in the normal criteria and was surprised I had it. Well, it turns out you can have the coronavirus, COVID-19, and not have any symptoms. So if you're going out, you know, that could affect someone else without you even knowing you have it. Or you might have it and be very sick and you can get worse and worse and, and have pneumonia. And the governor of New York is saying that some people have to be on ventilators three weeks or even longer, which is crazy because usually with a respiratory um, illness, you don't have to be on a ventilator that long. So there's, um, that's why the unemployment being higher than what people are making is smart. And a lot of these people would like to have been making more, but their work doesn't pay much per hour and slash, or they only have a part-time job. And most people want to work full-time if they can, but you know, a lot of employers don't let, it, let you work full-time. Uh, but then getting the extra money is going to really help them. And uh, it's going to also help them to stay put and not have to go out and uh, try to make money in a time where it's just so dangerous to be out because you can affect other people. Uh, when it comes to the stimulus, which isn't really a stimulus, probably a better word to use is a rescue package because the economy is basically on ice right now. We're in a depression. Uh, the stock market, and I know the stock market's not everything, but I am a fan of the stock markets. I um, encourage people to invest in stocks and keep their money there for their whole life. And that way you're going to usually grow your wealth a lot and be able to retire comfortably. But anyway, the stock market fell quicker than it ever fallen before. Even in the Great Depression, it did not fall as quickly. I mean, it was at an all time high, just like, you know, less than six weeks ago on, on February 19th. And uh, this week it came up a lot, but it's still down quite a bit. And of course on Monday, it was at the low, lowest point since um, around like beginning of 2017 and of 2016. So that, that, that Trump, Trump economy, and he always talks about the Dow Jones, totally cratered. Um, 
And of course, you know, what was that economy built on? Well, it was built on phony money. It was built on giveaways to rich corporations. And it was built on massive deficit spending. So the Republican Party often, when there's like Democrats in control, they will claim to be uh, fiscal conservatives, that they're against deficit spending. Uh, but now, a trillion dollar deficit a year, they say, oh, that's great. You know, look, our economy's on fire. It's doing really well. Uh, but a lot of that is smoke and mirrors. So when you have corporations value going through the roof, they are pricing in that, oh, look, now I don't have to pay all these taxes. Now I don't have to follow environmental regulations. They um, just now are saying, oh, all environmental regulations are off. Uh, you can do whatever you want, please, like, you know, self-regulate because we're not enforcing anything. What does coronavirus have to do with letting, you know, companies emit nitrous oxide and, and, and carbon dioxide and methane and uh, fluorofluorocarbons? Like, what does that have to do with that? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and you see, like, I just came out with a statement against fracking. Fracking is totally senseless. It is destructive. It kills, uh, it's going to kill people, of course, too, and some people have already died from it, but it kills nature, animals, um, fresh water, which there isn't a whole lot of fresh water on Earth. Like, most water on Earth is salt water. Uh, and also, it makes no economic sense at all. And so now, oil prices have cratered, and simultaneously with coronavirus, there's been some stuff going on with oil, where uh, oil prices, they're having like a, a price war, how much oil are we going to produce? And it's like the OPEC countries or Saudi Arabia or something, if they produce more oil, that drives the price down and makes it worse for all of the oil that's being sold. So oil is a money loser now, and fracking is even worse because a lot of these fracking operations are um, just very close to being unprofitable. They're on razor thin margins, and if they had to pay for the da damage they do to the environment, they would never have gotten started because, you know, it would just be tremendously in the red. You know, it'd be like um, trying to sweep a driveway with a, a toothbrush. Uh, so, so now we're seeing that a lot of these companies are going to go bankrupt and there are many businesses that will go out of business and uh, some people have been saying support your local like restaurants by buying a gift card. Don't buy a gift card. If you buy a gift card, you're giving an interest, um, your interest free loan, no collateral, you're usually paying 100% face value. Um, and you have no idea if they're going to be in business. And if they're not, good luck getting anything. I mean, look, that happened to people with Circuit City, uh, Joanne, Fabrics, some restaurants. And there was a restaurant in Boston that a lot of people lost money on just because the owner decided to uh, start a new restaurant. He says, oh, all the old gift cards are invalid. So I, I don't even think you should buy any gift cards at all, ever, unless there's a discount to do it. Um, instead, just give people money. Like, why is there a stigma with that? And, you know, that's why I've come out to support the uni a universal basic income, which is something Andrew Yang has been pushing for a long time. And it's an idea that's very old. Martin Luther King Jr. was for it um, and many other important people in the past. And it actually came close to passing at one point in the 60s or 70s, but didn't make didn't make it because, you know, there's always this uh, narrative that uh, you can't give people money because they're going to be really lazy. And that's just not supported by data. There's a lot of things that people say uh, as if they're like common knowledge or, you know, common sense that just aren't true. Uh, it's the same when it comes to voting and voting suppression. Um, they are suppressing the vote, mainly Republicans. I don't know if Democrats are doing it too in blue states, but it's to a much larger extent with Republicans. And uh, you're seeing crazy stuff happening like, in Georgia, you know, Stacey Abrams should be the governor now, but Brian Kemp was simultaneously the Secretary of State and running for governor, and he was deleting people from the records illegally. There's still a lot of criminal charges pending against him, uh, criminal cases, civil cases, and uh, getting rid of polling sites to make it really hard to get to the polls in majority Democratic counties. So it was so close that he easily won the election because of that. If not for that, he would have lost. As governor, he's appointed a woman, I can't remember her name at the moment, but appointed her as a U.S. senator to fill a vacancy. So she's not elected, she's a U.S. senator. And then along with Richard Burr and a couple other senators, 
they received classified intelligence briefings months ago, you know, January, December, February. Uh, and so they were at the same time selling their stocks at an all time market high because they were being told, oh, this coronavirus is going to be actually terrible. Like it's going to be worse than the Great Depression, possibly. While they're hearing that and, and selling their stocks, uh, they're telling the public, you got nothing to worry about. This is no worse than the flu. And, and that's just criminal. I mean, it's not the flu. Now, at the first that I heard of it, I thought, oh, this is not going to be bad. People are freaking out. But, you know, I'm not a doctor of medicine. I'm a doctor of um, education, a PhD in education. But, you know, that's not the same as being an epidemiologist. I don't, I'm not an expert on that. So there's always a risk, you know, for people like me to speculate and say, oh, I don't think the coronavirus is a big deal. Well, it turns out it's a big effing deal. And, um, here we have more people now than any country. I mean, we have 110,000 cases. Every day it's exploding. People are going to be dying in such large numbers that you just cannot believe it. And uh, you keep hearing, even now, they're still saying, well, the H1N1 flu was worse. The flu each year is worse. Well, you know, the flu is like this. Maybe some years it's like this because it's worse depending on the strain. But the coronavirus is like this. So when you get up here, it's going to easily overtake the flu in number of deaths, and, and then it's just going to keep on going. Uh, I was saying about the governor appointing a senator in Georgia. That uh, senator says she has no idea what goes on with her portfolio, that her stocks, they just, you know, were sold by her financial advisor or whoever manages it, and she didn't even know. But... Her husband is the chair of the New York Stock Exchange and their net worth combined together is $500 million. So, you know, do you really buy that she didn't know? I don't buy it. And so, you know, you just see that it's just money is, is valued over people. But money is important too. And I think that you all know how important money is because most people, they don't want to work the job they're working. They're there because they need to earn that paycheck to get by uh you know people like i'm very fortunate and you know i have some planning like i'm good with personal finance but also i have to account for how fortunate i've been to have the opportunities i've had um and so you know i got my entire like education for free basically they paid me to go except for my master's degree i paid out of pocket for that but it was still you know at a state university and uh when you go to a state university you are being subsidized by the taxpayer because you're paying a reduced rate. Uh, for finance, another thing is to ask. I had mentioned that earlier, but forgot to come back to it. Uh, you can call if you can get through or send emails or text to your landlord, your bank, your uh, credit card, your mortgage, um, your auto loan, your, your student loans should be suspended right now if they're federal. If they're private student loans, you know, hopefully the private lenders are going to work with you quite easily too, but you have to ask generally. And so then if you ask, most of them are going to say, okay, we're not going to like raise your interest rate or could you just make the minimum payment on a credit card? Your minimum payment is usually only like $30, $40. And then, um, I don't know if they're reducing interest rates, but you know, for your, your mortgage, water bill, et cetera, uh, they're like working with you, maybe the wave late fees. Generally, they're still expecting you to pay it later and also to everything that you didn't pay now. So I don't know how you're gonna come up with this huge sum of money in, in, in June or July, but you have to ask and you have to take initiative. And that's especially important for women because research will tell you that a lot of times uh, women are, are less likely to speak up because they're, you know, held down. They are um, enculturated to not make any waves and not ask for something. And it's not fair. And it happens with um, employment. Like uh, a man will tend to negotiate their salary better and uh, just be offered more off the bat without even asking for it. So you got to get on the phone or do what you can to ask for special consideration. A lot of people don't know that. I've had times where I like accidentally um, drew money out of the wrong bank account and I had overdraft. So I'll call or go in branch and ask, could I get a courtesy waiver? 
And I'll even say, could I get a one-time courtesy waiver? Like I haven't had one before. And, and usually they will say yes, at least to me. I don't know if they'll say it to everybody. Um, so you have to check and see what you can get. And so I said in one tweet recently, in Florida, uh, they're allowed to, uh, landlords are allowed to take a, uh, a first month and a last month rent and a security deposit. I know like in New York City, they're not allowed to ask for last month's rent anymore, but here they still do that regularly. So try to ask with your landlord for leniency and remind them that, you know, you still have a lot of my money on hand. You have my last month's rent, you have my security deposit. That's like two months. Now they are required by law to uh, not use that money and to keep it into separate accounts that they don't spend. But you know, really, I don't know if they're gonna waive that, you know, statewide, but that's something they should look at in the legislature if they get back in session for a special uh, session. In Florida, they only meet for two months. So the state legislature is usually out of session 10 months a year. But if they are able to, they should let like landlords use that money as operating capital. Well, sort of, but then, you know, they need to be able to pay that back to their tenants too. So with everything, there's a balance like, well, this is good in one way, but bad in another. Now I have like been hard on landlords. Some people are even harder and they say landlords don't do anything productive. I don't agree with that 100%. It's a lot of work to be a landlord. You know, you've got like, you know, uh, buildings deteriorate, you've got maintenance to do, you've got a lot of bills, it's, uh, it's a thankless job, you've got to collect rent and stuff. But at the same time, I think that if you're going to be a landlord, uh, you, you should try to have some money on hand for uh, emergencies or unexpected situations like this. And if you don't, you can still put your money in, in real estate. There are these things called real estate investment trust or REITs, R-E-I-T, that you can put money in a mutual fund. Uh, Vanguard has one, that's like the most popular one. And it invests in real estate all over the country, property management companies and, and their properties, commercial real estate, you know, it's all pooled together and you don't have to do anything. And some people say that's a good investment. Personally, I wouldn't touch that. I would just stick with stocks and bonds because um, real estate is, uh, it doesn't really seem to have a lot of advantages to a portfolio and uh, you can just stick with stocks and bonds and, and be better off. And sometimes it doesn't come back as quickly. Like a lot of people assume, oh, real estate's the best investment, but is it? I mean, a lot of prices around here, they're still lower in nominal dollars than they were in 2007. And if you adjust for inflation, they never got back to where they were, whereas the stock market did um, and a lot of other things did. So a stimulus, you will get um, $2,400 married, 1,200 single, one kid, 2,900, two kids, 3,400. If your income is below um, 75,000 per year single, 150,000 married. Um, and then if it's higher, you can still get it up to like 99,000 single or 198,000 of income married, but it phases out so you get less and less per hundred dollars of additional income you get five dollars less that probably won't be going out until um late april like it takes a while for federal you know gov the federal government or even a state government to administer uh, payments at this massive scale uh and then if you have a child there's a bit more leeway on the income so they're going to pull your income from previous years uh now you don't have to file if you haven't already until july 15th instead of April 15th for your 2019 federal income tax return. If you haven't, they will look at your 2018 tax return. And if you have, they're going to look at your 2019 return. And that's what I'm hearing anyway. So you have a choice only if you haven't filed already. Oh, I could wait, not file my 2019 taxes and possibly get more money. Like let's say in 2018, uh, you're single and you made 60,000. And then in 2019, you made 100,000. Well, if you file your taxes now, or if you've already done it for 2019, you're getting zero. But if you wait, you're gonna get that full $1,200. Uh, and then you can file later for 2019 and, and you don't have to pay any of that $1,200 back. Now, if you had a kid before, you'll still get that extra $500 per child now. But let's say if you had a child this year, they're gonna look at your 2018 to 2019 return and you won't get 500 per child but you'll be able to get it later when you file your 2020 taxes 
Um, so then maybe February, March of 2021, you should be able to get $500 per child then, in addition to the regular child tax credit. Uh, and then of course, if you had your child in 2018, um, then it will be included. But if you had your child in 2019, but didn't file yet, they'll look at 2018 and you won't get your $500 for that child that was born in 2019, unless you filed for 2019. So for us, we already filed um, and our son was born in February of 2019, so we'll get an extra $500 because of him. And uh, that's good. I mean, that's something that's very necessary. Uh, the, the economy is just on ice basically right now. It's, it's even worse than the Great Depression in terms of unemployment and in terms of um, economic output, which will come out soon on the numbers. You know, the percentages, they take a while to be computed, but they'll come out later. Uh, I guess I don't have too much else on the top of my head to talk about. Uh, once again, um, my name is Richard Thripp, and I'm a progressive Democrat here in um, Del near Deltona, Florida, running for uh, U.S. Congress, uh, 28 years old, married, and uh, a father, and a, a teacher, educator, and uh, I've lived here my whole life. And uh, the district I'm running in, the incumbent, he's a Republican. He's very um, popular with Donald Trump. Like this, And uh, I think he is vulnerable. And this district includes all of Volusia and all of Flagler County. So that includes all of Daytona Beach, all of Palm Coast, all of uh, New Smyrna Beach, Deltona, a little bit of St. John's County, like a little bit of Hastings and Crescent Beach and then a little bit of um, Eustis and, and Mount Dora is included in Lake County. So, you know, that's more people than the state of uh, Vermont even. It's a lot of people. And uh, this year, not many people want to run. Last time there were very well-qualified candidates running, three well-qualified Democrats. The woman, uh, Ambassador Nancy Soderbergh, was much more qualified to be a congressperson than I am. But none of them want to run again. And I think at the same time, we also need new leadership and young people in Congress. So I appreciate if you could support me, vote for me in August and November. We don't know how you'll vote. Depending on coronavirus, you might all have to vote by mail. And you can sign up for that right now online if you want on your, your county elections supervisor's website by like Google searching that. Uh, and, and then we'll see what happens. This is uh, unprecedented and um, it's a very big tragedy. Uh, and when Donald Trump goes on saying that nobody knew this could happen, that isn't true. I mean, Bill Gates has been warning about something like this forever. There was a, a pandemic um, response team that he got rid of. Uh, I don't think it was in the CDC, but it was in the military. And in 2018, he just axed it. And he shouldn't have. It's kind of like saying after your house is like burned down. Well, who could have known that you need homeowner's insurance? Well, you know, people knew it. And that's why, you know, it's such a common thing that's all, you know, required if you have a mortgage. and. Um, you know, that's what insurance is for, really. Not Health insurance is weird because you need it just to get care sometimes. And also, you know, you need it to get a reduced rate because if you don't have it, they're going to bill you, you know, 50000 for something that the insurance company will only have to pay $8,000 for. But when it comes to other insurances, insurance is really to protect you from a catastrophic financial loss that you can't afford. It's unlikely to happen, but you don't want it to bankrupt you if it does. And so overall, you want to be paying that insurance in, even if you never use it. And obviously, you're expecting to lose money, but in the off chance you need it, then you have it. And that's something that we don't have in this government. And we need to have it. We need to have a focus on the future and not just the crisis, you know, that's happening right now. Although right now, you know, the coronavirus is where we need to focus, it, of course. Uh, and you see, even in like, the funding of government agencies at the federal level, Congress just passes a continuing resolution one after another. There's no ability for Congress to pass a budget and for federal agencies and even you know state and local ones that depend on federal funds, they have no idea what's coming in the future. They have no idea if they'll be able to keep their staff, if their projects will be able to keep going. And there's a tremendous cost to that uncertainty that you know we really need to address and and get our act together when it comes to what's going on and so when i go to congress i'm going to work across the aisle and i'm going to work with democrats and republicans and i'm going to try to get you know more of a um, 
they want us to get things that are just done in a sensible manner and actually working for the people instead of working for you know big money and special interests. So also I take donations, uh, campaign contributions on ActBlue, and so I appreciate in the links below you could donate to me if you have money too. And uh, that is very important for me because you know I have been in favor of universal health care, in favor of a freedom dividend or universal basic income, and in favor of a Green New Deal because we need to change the way we're doing things when it comes to all industries and um, destroying the earth because the atmosphere is becoming too hot and too much um, carbon dioxide, other gases, oceans are hotter, coral reefs are dying, hurricanes are much more powerful, droughts, uh, heat waves, flooding. It's all happening now. It's not something that you think, oh, that's something happening 20 years from now or 100 years from now. No, it's happening right now, and we can't just keep sitting on our hands when it comes to this. So if, if for me, running, there's no money coming in for me. No, Nobody like in business, I'm not going to get $5,000 from a pack for oil companies. Big Sugar isn't going to give me $5,000. You know, Bill France or his... Um, whatever his grandson's name is who runs NASCAR, he's not going to give me $5,600. But with the Republican was in, you know, all his money is $2,800, $2,800, $5,000, $5,000, $5,000, $5, because they're not just donating it to him. They give it to him knowing that they're going to get a good return on their investment. Well, for people like me, nobody's going to give me money who, you know, would benefit like that because I'm not going to help them. So all I've got is people like you to give me, you know, $20 or $50 or even $5. And so I appreciate that. And I hope that you'll also, you know, offer to volunteer if you can and, and come out and vote for me. My name is Richard Thrip once again, and I'm running for um, Florida 6th District U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, thank you and uh, have a good evening.